Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the ASUS GT630. It has 2 gigs of DDR3 VRAM, 96 CUDA cores and cost me £8. Here is what it's capable of. So, the GT630 came in a couple of different variants. Aside from some having DDR3 VRAM and others GDDR5, these cards can also be found in both Fermi and Kepler versions. I can't be sure what sort of performance difference you should expect between the two, but what I can say is that my Fermi model here is pretty weak, not to mention driver support for it has ended. But let's overclock it. Okay, maybe we'll be a little more delicate than that. This really isn't the ideal card for this, but it's certainly possible to turn up the stock clocks a bit. Too high though, and you'll end up with artifacts like this. Maybe one gigahertz was a little ambitious. I found that these settings were the limit for this GPU. The core, memory and shader clocks have all been boosted. While it's not going to win me any overclocking competitions, I was curious as to whether these changes could push us over 30 FPS, considering the 630 was coming close beforehand, but falling ever so slightly short in the averages. If we jump back into the same games, I'll talk you through the changes in frame rate, if any, and discuss any issues we may have had, aside from the obvious artifacting and whatnot. So, I bought this card with no real intentions. I just never tested one before, I think. It certainly isn't the best version for overclocking, and it will struggle in a lot of modern AAA titles anyway. So what's changed with our speed increase? Well, Dirt Rally 2 came in just shy of 30 frames per second at stock speeds, with 26 on average and OK 1% and 0.1% lows. Our overclock pushed us over that 30 FPS mark ever so slightly, and improved the percentile figures as well. It's not much, and there will still be some slowdown, but it certainly felt a little smoother. There's no real room to increase the graphical settings though. It was a similar story in Fallout 4, the average increased a little and so did the 1% low, but the 0.1% figure remained the same, indicating some noticeable frame dips. I took a similar walk around Concord, as I did first time round, but please remember that because this is actual gameplay and not a set benchmark test, there's a larger margin of error to consider. I'll include the results from a Far Cry New Dawn benchmark run at the end, just for fairness, but I prefer real world gameplay, as it's more representative of, well, exactly that. Fortnite saw the biggest improvement, but this really should be taken with a pinch of salt, as it's hard to replicate similar conditions twice over in this game. Still, it certainly felt like a smoother overall experience, with less frame dips than before. I was still using 720p and the low settings here, as I have been throughout. Finally, it's PUBG. There was a couple of frames difference here, an increase from 20 to 22, but the GT630 didn't like running this title at all. We were starting to see some artifacts on screen at this point, something that hadn't occurred thus far, and I thought it was a pretty stable overclock until now. This is a sign that the card is, to put simply, not enjoying what you're doing to it. The game was still pretty much unplayable as well, and killing your GPU for the sake of 22 frames per second as opposed to 20 doesn't sound like a worthy trade-off. Anyway, let me talk about that Far Cry New Dawn result. It was a bit of an afterthought so I didn't record the benchmark run, but here's what you can expect in difference between the stock and overclocked card. It really isn't much, but then again, Far Cry New Dawn was never going to run smoothly on this thing anyway. Well with all that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a little shorter than usual, but uh, I wanted to check the GT630 out anyway. I really wasn't sure what to do with it and I thought, why not overclock it and see if that makes any difference. Nonetheless, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and in next one we'll be looking at an old school Dell XPS that I'm really excited about checking out, so hopefully you can join me then.